so in this video guys we will try to understand the word physiology what we generally have heard is that it is nothing but the study of the normal functions of the body and its part normal functions like what functions like respiration functions like circulation functions like digestion and absorption functions like excretion metabolism movement reproduction immunity homeostasis these are all the normal functions of the body and us trying to you know decipher the reasoning behind them the mechanisms that are involved behind them is nothing but physiology so the word physiology guys can be broken down into two words that is physis and logic what physis essentially means is the nature or the built-in nature of the living body that nature that is that operates automatically when it is not influenced by something that is external and logic is nothing but trying to study or trying to reason our body in that state when it operates naturally so it is reasoning the mechanisms behind the natural bodily functions those bodily functions which are not subject to influence from outside so when we study the body in this state it is actually physiology so one more way to look at physiology can be through this definition which states that it is a scientific attempt to explain to comprehend the mechanisms which are responsible for the origin development and the progression of life itself let's try to break this down it is saying that physiology is a scientific attempt what it basically means that it is based on data data that is testable testifiable that is verifiable and that data that is repeatable now why why is it important that we mention this is because if you look at the history of physiology and medicine in general especially in the before common era 3200 what we come to know that a lot of this history is you know speculative it is just blind guessing or it has been philosophical wherein people come with educated guesses but again nevertheless these can't be our foundations on which we will build physiology therefore the best way forward to is have a scientific approach towards this understanding so what we are saying guys physiology is a scientific attempt to explain and to comprehend the mechanisms which are making life happen now these mechanisms guys they occur at the back end these occur behind the screen and what we see on the screen is the life itself therefore it is important that these mechanisms occur properly so that we may you know witness life and this life when we speak of life guys this can be understanding the life of a bacteria that is when we use the word bacterial physiology or it can be viral physiology physiology of the plants physiology of the invertebrates and in our case physiology of the vertebrates that is the human physiology so all those functions that we mentioned earlier guys circulation excretion respiration homeostasis reproduction all these trying to understand the back end process that is the mechanisms which is leading to smooth functioning of this human functions which is making us what we are trying to decipher these mechanisms guys is physiology so guys when we try to understand the mechanisms that are working behind these physiological processes these mechanisms can be physical in nature or they can be chemical in nature when we look at the physical mechanisms what is common in this if you try to look at it these mechanisms involve motion there is force and there is structural arrangement for example if you look at heart the contraction or the pumping action of the heart is a process where motion is involved or for that matter when you are taking the air breathing in the air exhaling the air that is again a process where motion is involved similarly your movement and even the process of filtration here there is there are changes in pressure for example we have this thing called the glomerulus right we have the afferent arterial the efferent arterial and then there is difference of pressure between this uh, between the hydrostatic and the oncotic pressure this difference of pressure and generation of a net pressure is actually leading to formation of the gfr and in the nervous system obviously we have the reflexes which are automatically activated and peristalsis is the process of basically movement of the bubble to push the food down so what is common here already mentioned is that there is movement 
and if you look at the chemical processes here we we take into account the actions of the hormones the important enzymes and the electrolytes hormones for example you see adrenaline adrenaline can increase the heart rate how can adrenaline increase the heart rate guys for example we have epinephrine nor epinephrine they go and act on the beta 1 receptors of the heart right and this activation of beta 1 receptor will basically lead to activation of the gpcr cascade this gpcr cascade will eventually lead to activation of adenylate cyclase and activation of protein kinase a and this protein kinase a will you know depending upon what type of gpcr that is that will perform different functions in this case because it because it is beta 1 receptor it will increase the heart rate and similarly the contraction can also be increased by changing or by increasing the amount of calcium that is coming inside of the heart the point is that the physical and the chemical mechanisms are not separate they are dependent mechanisms for a proper functioning and execution of a function we need proper synchrony between the physical and the chemical mechanisms they go hand in hand they are not separate entities although the nature might seem separate but at the end you know they work together so let's recap our definition of physiology guys physiology is nothing but a scientific attempt that is based on data which is repeatable verifiable and this data is used to explain the different mechanisms which are occurring at the back end which are nothing but the physical and the chemical mechanisms which together in synchrony allow for the life to happen whereas the human body itself is made up of 35 to 40 trillion cells now trillion means you know 40 into 10 to power 12 these are the number of cells we have in our body and out of these cells around 80 percent are rbc and what is more fascinating is we have a lot of microorganisms within our body and these microorganisms can sometimes outnumber the number of cells that actually form our own body so we harbor more number of microorganisms in our body than the total number of cells that are forming our body and these microorganisms are not very dangerous in the sense they are helping us live for example the gut microbiota is helping us digest food it is producing vitamin k and these are also known to help us in immunity nutrition etc these uh, my bacteria they actually become invasive or dangerous when opportunity is given to them for example when there is decreased immunity or there is some other disease progress that is happening inside of the body that is when they start to migrate within the body to a point where they should not belong and that can lead to problems